Welcome everyone to a new tutorial series. This will be on Distant Worlds, uh, Distant Worlds Universe to be specific, uh, which is kind of like the gold edition of the Distant Worlds games. This is one of my favorite games of all times, so in this episode I'm just going to walk you through how to start a new game for beginners. We're going to go to Custom Empire as a standard, Custom Game as Standard Empire, and I've kind of already walked through and configured things the way I want them. I'll just do a brief explanation. The type of galaxy shape is not so important. It definitely won't impact your play in like a radical manner. What I wanted to do is choose a ring because assuming that there's not too many stars in the middle and we kind of have chosen not so many stars, so there won't be much in the middle, um, what you're going to have is basically just a big circle. And it'll be hard to cross the circle in the beginning of the game. So essentially what you'll have is like a line that you can walk around the edge of. And that means that things will be much more linear. It's almost like a one-dimensional universe <laughs> and instead of a two-dimensional universe, which is going to be helpful. If you just like unfolded this line here and flattened it out so it's just flat, um, with this point still connecting back to the point on the right, that's what I think of the ring universe as, at least until technology gets good enough that you can traverse from one side to another. So for that, we're going to choose 100 stars, which is the least amount you can. I'm a little confused why they didn't just make this number variable, but that's fine. Um, and then the physical size, we're going to choose 6 by 6. This is going to spread these 100 stars out, 100 stars out very thinly, but that's desired because we want to kind of slow down the gameplay. This is for beginners, so let's think about making everything a little slower, exploration a little slower, buy everybody a little more time to do whatever they want which mainly is going to give us as the player, presumably a beginner, more time to expand in the directions we want to figure out the, what do we want to do. And we won't have to interact with other empires quite as quickly, which will be nice. Now, for expansion, we're always going to choose pre-warp. I don't know why you would ever want to not choose that, because this is the best. The best part about this game is building your, gal your empire from the ground up. So we'll choose pre-warp for everyone. And later we'll select pre-warp for ourselves. Aggression, you can do normal if you want to try to do a diplomatic type victory. Um, I'm kind of usually interested in seeing wars. Now, note, aggression is not just your aggression against all the other empires. It's every empire's attitude towards every other empire. So if you set things to unstable or chaos, the AI will also be fighting the other AI a lot more. But in this case, we don't really care too much about that. I put it to Restless to encourage hostilities a little bit, but things probably won't break into war until maybe towards the end of the game. And usually with Restless, it'll be more on our terms, which is nice. Now difficulty to start, you just it's fine. Normal is still easy enough. Um, so let's choose that. Never choose this difficulty scaling. Usually at the end of the game, things get a little more tedious. So we never want to slow down the victory. Um, for research costs, I'm going to do expensive. This again is going to slow down the game give us a little more time to think about our decisions. You can see that this cost is 240. For my normal games, I, I think most people even choose something more expensive than this, which is kind of nice, especially if you choose a research-oriented a research -oriented faction or race, you actually can uh, get further ahead by increasing the cost of research because you'll go through it a lot quicker. Now, obviously we're gonna set space creatures to none for our first game, but we're going to leave pirates at a few. We're just going to keep them very weak. Make sure that the proximity is average and that when they're destroyed, we, we don't have to deal with them again. But we do want them in the beginning of the game because there are some good things about pirates. They're not just a total nuisance. You can almost think of them as, if you know the analogy, city-states in civilization games. Um, civilization 5 is the one I'm thinking of. They're, kind of. they're not just total barbarians. That would be space creatures. There have, they have a, a diplomatic aspect to them. Okay, so let's move on. We're going to choose normal and normal. This is just how many colonies, how many sites will be available for colonization. Basically just increases the quality of planets. And this is how many other independent colonies will exist that don't have any empire that they belong to. So they're just independent colonies. And these are nice because we can capture them to you know, further snowball ahead or hopefully assuming that we're doing well. Now colony influences range is something which I play with constantly. I haven't settled on a good amount. What we'll do for this beginner game is just leave it right at its default. 
But I'll discuss this more at another time. I think it's very interesting. But for now, let's just choose exactly what they recommend. And this is the dynamic of choosing the 100 stars and the 6x6. That means the stars are going to be really spread out. But colonization range, we're going to keep at only 1.7, which means that no empire is going to be able to expand too far from their starting area. But things will be spread out far enough that their starting area won't be that many stars to begin with. So this is just going to make it so that people can't jump all the way right next to you right away. Now, you won't be able to do that to them either. But if you're like me, you probably, pre probably prefer like a little more slow, gradual expansion. Now the race decision is a really tough one. Um, it wants us to choose human. I'm actually going to go with Akdarian. First of all, we get 1% more default reproduction rate, which is really, arguably, not much. We lose a little bit in research. I think humans have, if I go back to them, 15? They do. And they have better spies, which are two great things. However, the two things that I want that the humans don't have is the Actarians have this wonderful technology, the turbo thrusters, which are superb main engines. I mean, the best in the game. And you can't do any better than this technology. I think that the only argument you could make is that some other technologies are equally as good as their engines, but these engines are really wonderful. Now, I won't go into the whole research tree technology stuff debate here, but let's just stick with what I'm saying because eh, if you want to follow my example, we'll just do the Actarians. Now, if you want to, you can choose any other race and you can kind of duplicate the same things I'll be doing in the next examples, but your mileage may vary a little bit if you choose a different race. But these are a very strong race. I, I think that if you talked with most experts on this game, the Actarians would at least rank in their top five. Okay, so Empire name, beginner, sure. And I like to choose, most of these get to be like little circle-ish designs. So I like to choose something a little different just to make my Empire stand out a little more on the screen. We're going to choose excellent, starting, pre-warp, low corruption, and very importantly, we're going to choose democracy here which is gonna give us an increase to growth rate, which is very important, increase to research speed, which is really important. And unfortunately, we have this 20% maintenance cost, but that's exactly offset. The Actarians have a minus 20% ship maintenance. So these two things will cancel out and we'll be sitting neutral. And we won't care about troop, re troop recruitment much. So that's fine, minus 25% is one of the best things for us to have a penalty to. The approval is also really not that important, but we'll take it. And corruption, since we set it low, isn't too big of a deal, but it'll further reduce whatever low corruption there is. Now, importantly, we want to make sure that we start not at the core and not in the void, but on the rim. So I have started a game in these exact conditions, just randomly in the middle, and it slows you down quite a bit. We want to actually be on the edge and exploring around, the, around there, so let's do that. Great, now everything's set up. We'll be... Okay... Uh, let's see, whatever, uh, Akdar peoples. I just want to choose something other than beginner so that I know that my race is being addressed. And I think a good number of empires for this small map condition is five. You could probably even do four. In fact, uh, no, let's leave it at five. Let's leave it at five because we didn't do that many pirates. So let's do five and go on to victory conditions. Just auto-generate them, it's okay. You can later fool around with these more advanced options, but let's also deselect everything on this screen. What that means is we leave all victory conditions unchecked for sandbox mode. This is basically open play. So our victory condition is just going to be learning the game. So we do all those things, we turn off all the story modes, and the only thing that you could leave on if you want here is tech trading. But let's go into tech trading in a later example and just start this time focusing on our own empire and not as much on diplomacy. Okay, so now I'm gonna call this episode to a close and the next one we'll jump into our actual game, how to do the very first like 10 minutes of a new game start. Um, as for this one, thanks for watching.